Okay, so this video is how to use Microsoft Teams to create a video of your lecture that you can post online. The video will then go to Microsoft Stream, a different thing, um, and where the students can actually watch it. So how to get to Microsoft Teams, if you're in your Outlook window, um, you could either click on these buttons and go down to Stream, which doesn't show up here, but on Outlook you could click on all apps and it'll show up. Or in Google you just type in Microsoft Teams, or you can download it to your computer. And so I've created a team here. You can create a team. I'd assume we're going to have to create one for each of our classes. Um, and so when you click on it, um, these are this is the thread of stuff we've been chatting about. And so how to get the videos going, I'm sure there must be another way, but how I do it, sorry, not doing that, not pushing that button. How I do it is I go down here, I click on this video button and just start a new conversation. And <clears throat> this is how I record the videos. So can I explain something at present? I am currently recording my screen doing, using different software. The reason I'm doing that is that Microsoft um, Team doesn't allow, allow me to show you a few things. So you'll see as soon as I click on that camera, I can add in a, a header. And so I'm gonna, the heading here is how to use Microsoft Team. And I'm going to click on meet now. You could schedule a later meeting, but I'm going to pretend my lecture is starting now. So as soon as I click on some of these buttons down here, or I think it doesn't, it doesn't even show this if I use Microsoft Teams to show, like to record. So I needed to use alternative software to record what I was doing so I could explain these options to you. Um, so I'll explain to you when we move over to the Microsoft recording. Okay, so you will open up here. It's going to say to invite people to join. I find this a bit confusing because I'm creating this video in a group. Why is it not inviting the group already? So this I'm not sure about. We'll have to come back later. Here's the recording time. It doesn't start at zero. I'm not sure why. I could turn on my webcam. Mine is giving problems. So it doesn't work. You're welcome to try it. My microphone is not muted. This button is the sharing button, and this will become important when you're going to share your screen to show the students, but I'll get there now. These three buttons, there's a whole bunch of other options. The important thing here is start recording. <coughs> so if you are talking here to your students and you don't push start recording, it will not record, and you will not be able to save the video for later for students who couldn't come online. So you have to push the start recording. So as soon as I push it, um, you can see over here it's blanked out. This, I think, is a comment box here. I can hide participants, blah, blah, blah. I'm now going to go to the share button, and you can see I can either share my desktop screen. I can share, I assume these are the most recent PowerPoints. I can go to browse on my computer to browse for something, or there's a whiteboard option. I haven't used them yet, but I assume you could then just draw in it, and it's like having a, a whiteboard in your class. Let's go see... Um, okay, so here you could browse for maybe a PowerPoint you've got on your computer. I'm going to use the easy option right now and just click on desktop. And so do I want to share my entire desktop, just the application that's running on my desktop, so I'll zoom into whatever window is open, or do Opera tab is my Internet Explorer. I'm just going to do entire screen and go share. Okay, so right now what would happen is that your student screen would go from this black screen of saying invite people to join and seeing this SE or something like that, it would now show my entire screen. Now you have been seeing my entire screen the whole way along because I'm using other software. So this is the time where it would change for your student, they would be able to see your computer screen. You otherwise have been able to see it for, forever. So I'm going to use this opportunity now to go through a PowerPoint that you, as an example of what you would be going through with your students. So in Geosciences, we need to start discussing about moving online, and we've already started this discussion. And a big thing around this discussion is smartphones. So why am I focusing so much on smartphones and not laptops? If you have a student who has a laptop and no smartphone and no internet, they are not going to be accessing Sakai. But if they don't have a laptop, but they do have a smartphone, and they are an MT in Vodacom or Telcom, they can access Sakai for free. They can watch all the videos for free. It is not going to be a problem, as long as it's on Sakai or Microsoft Stream. If they're going to be watching videos on YouTube, that's not going to work. They're going to have to pay for it. So this is why smartphones are so important. I understand for subjects where there's coding involved, this is going to be a problem. They do need laptops as well. 
but so the majority of the student smartphones is important. So when it comes to putting your lectures online, everyone I think is a bit daunted about getting a 45 minute lecture online. We do not want 45 minute lectures online. I think if students are in remote areas with poor internet access, they're going to struggle to stream your video and get so frustrated if it's constantly cutting out. So we need to have short videos, five minute videos, interspersed with activities to help reinforce the knowledge. So you need to get one or two ideas across in a lecture. I know universities are all about overloading students with knowledge, but what are we actually teaching them? If they're just learning it off the heart and forgetting it all, we need to teach the key concepts and using things like reading, live lectures, which is what we're doing here. I said YouTube videos, but I said here they've got to be properly embedded in Sakai so that they run through Sakai and the students don't have to pay for the data. Or we have to use Microsoft Streaming for videos. So use these platforms to get key concepts across to students. And then spend time getting the students to reinforce what they've learned. So this is something like participating in a forum, so you could ask them a question, all of them can, a forum on Sakai. And I have created a video for that. I'll put the link below in this video, but it's also been mailed out. They could do an online assignment in Sakai. Also, there's a video for this, an online test. I haven't created a video for creating a poll, but this is another way to get them to engage with questions. Something else, out the box, they could draw a picture, um, link to your question, take a photo of it with their phone, and then upload it on Sakai. So just different ways to get them to reinforce what they are learning. <coughs> So important tools you need to start familiarizing yourself with is the lesson tab in Sakai. There's tons of tabs in Sakai that are important, but the lesson tab brings it all together. It's like a workflow tab that you can bring everything into. So it's literally what your students need to go through in a lesson. There is a video for this. Microsoft Teams on how to create videos, which is what this video is for. And then Microsoft Streams for sharing videos. The great thing with the between these two is as soon as I push stop on this recording, well, not on the recording of Microsoft Teams, it automatically loads it into streams. You just need to move it into the right group for the students. And if anybody has any other suggestions, please share them. The reason we're looking at Sakai and streams is because it's zero rated so the students can easily access it. Okay, so that's the end of my PowerPoint. So in real life, you would have been here on Microsoft Teams and I would have stopped the PowerPoint here. And so the next step is to hang up. And so hanging up will stop the sharing of the video, it will stop the recording, and you'll see now that it's going to show it's going to load into Microsoft Streams. So your students here, this would be the end of the lecture. So you click hang up. The reason why it's not the end of your lecture is because I'm using other software to record this. <clears throat> How was the quality? You can tell them it was wonderful. And it should bring you back to your screen. And so you can see here, it's just told you, you've just created this Microsoft Teams video. It was six minutes long. And it's currently, the recording has stopped, and it's busy saving it to Microsoft Streams. So it takes a while to do this. You could now click on the plus, plus button here and click on Microsoft Streams. Stream or Streams, I'm not sure. Uh, at Stream, you would click here. You would log in. Okay, so sign in again would be your staff number at vits.ac.za and your password. And so this is what it looks like. Um, you can discover stuff. My content and create are the main tabs I've been using. So I've created a group and I've created channels within that group. So if I go here to my content and I go to groups, you can see I've got this Vits Geoscience group, which I go inside. And I think this was a previous video I did that wasn't, um, didn't work, so I can actually go and delete it somehow. But channels, I've created separate channels for each of our courses um, to load stuff in. And videos is what you just saw. So you can see, um, um, this is the original one I had and this is the new one. I could even go back here and check the times. Well, the times don't really correlate. Um, so I can go double check them. So this is what you would then go and say here, plus add to a channel or group. I'm going to add it to this Vits Geoscience group. Um, okay, I assume this is the older one because it's already there. So Vits Geosciences. So I'm sending it. My, I'm telling my students in this group, this is what I need you to watch. And I would click save. So this was the older one, if I remember correctly. And I can just remove from the group. 
Okay, because I'm currently in, am I in a group? I'm not even sure. Um, and so my channels, go to groups, let's go here. Okay, and so if I go to videos in this group, and this is the video here, and like students um, could watch it. So what we need to work out now is how do we take this link and embed it in Sakai so the students know to click on it to go and watch this video.